So this article is about no charges will be filed against a white police officer who fatally shot a black security guard at a suburban Chicago bar. And this happened in the year of 2018. And so as I read it, it was a security guard and he worked in a bar and an active shooter incident occurred where a person came in and they were shooting. It was unclear why they were actually shooting. That, that is what it says in the article. And the security guard, he basically went ahead and subdued the active shooter. And so police officer comes in and instead of them helping the security guard finish completing the job by apprehending this active shooter, they shoot the security, the black African-American man who was the actual um, security guard that was trying to stop this active shooter in this bar. And so supposedly they didn't have enough evidence or it was insufficient evidence. So I will read the article, but it has sparked a lot of protest along with the many other stories that we've been hearing about black people who are either they're unarmed or they're they're not aggressively coming at police enforcement, but they somehow end up getting killed and and they wind up being innocent or they wind up having just a cell phone or they wind up having nothing in their hands or they're not an aggressor or maybe, you know, there's a a laundry list. You know, they might have been mistakenly accused of something they didn't actually do or commit and somehow these officers end up uh, getting exonerated or they're able to walk away without being punished and a lot of people are tired of it because the stories they all what's crazy about it the only difference is it's different cities different states but it's the same thing that people are hearing and it's very, very, not only suspicious, but it it all feels as though that the only conclusion that you can sum up out of all of this is racism. And because the stories are very similar when you put them together and parallel them, is that these officers are allowed to either their If they're suspended or fired, they're able to walk away unpunished. And so before I begin this story, um, I'll let you decide what you think this whole thing is. But, you know, everybody has their own opinions. And, you know, but from what most people are seeing, the stories are very similar or they turn out to be, you know, it's always um, a person of color. And that person, if they weren't involved in any crime or they were trying to explain themselves, somehow the officer ends up being the aggressor and ends up being able to walk free or not do any time for or spend any time in jail or help be accountable for what they've done. Unless it's Unless it's something like George Floyd where, you know, he's as a knee in the neck and you see him die on camera. And, you know, some of these incidents now are getting to the point where you actually see the person die and the officer still is not held accountable for, you know, they go through this long song and dance as to why the officer is not being punished. And so I want to say before I start this article, um, I'm going to say this. 
I don't think anybody has really evaluated this to the extent if you really pay close attention to all these different stories that we're hearing about people of color being murdered by law enforcement and these law officers are able to get away with it or either they don't get punished or held accountable. A lot of people are putting the blame squarely only on the police and the police department. However, there are other entities that are involved in law enforcement. You have not only your police officers, you have your detectives, you have also your lawyers, and you have your judges, you have um, court reporters, you have um, <clears throat> also the media that plays a huge part in, in this as well, you know, in terms of showing, you know, the whole scene, you know, so that everybody is informed on what they've come out with, whether it's some story that is developing or if the stories are cooperated correctly, if, you know, there's been any action taken, um, what type of media is it? Is it media that is pretty much uh, left-wing media, right-wing media? So a lot is has to be taken in consideration in these type of stories. And so most of the media is pretty much correct on some of the findings they come up with and then they re-evaluate what they've learned and then they'll re-edit their articles if new developments occur. And it's basically informational to keep people informed about situations but however the judge I think plays a key role as to the outcome of what happens to those officers in the very end now the lawyers they fight for you the clients they fight for the defendant they fight for the person who is the plaintiff <laughs> And in question and you know you have lawyers that will fight even for a person who has killed someone and they have to prove and have enough evidence and prove that this person you know what their intents were and you know Time and time again, you have people who are good at, you know, having a straight face and not being honest and acting as though their true intent was by mistake that they killed someone or that they didn't mean any malice. When in fact, a lot of times you have to look at the history of people, if they are in collusion with one another, if maybe someone knows somebody from a neighborhood or a family friend or you know person's father knows the judge from way back so a lot of times you know they say that they come in the courtroom and they have to throw all of their bias and all of their their beliefs out of the court room but you have to look at sometimes you got to look at the judges and they have, you know, a life and they have beliefs, they have family, they have previous history of living and you have to find out, you know, if you're allowed, who are they in connection with? And I would bet that some of these judges are affiliated with some of these police officers maybe if it isn't direct it could be a friend of a friend or family acquaintances is how they know one another sometimes they're affiliated with the lawyers they know the lawyers they pick their lawyers and some people have a family family lawyers that they know 
from way back that was always able, they, they had a lot of money and they could pay that lawyer. Uh, the lawyer did them favors where they could get away with things. So you have to take into consideration that a lot of this will all may well be um, pointing to racism, but there's also the fact that some of these lawyers, some of these judges, these law enforcement officers, they all connect. And sometimes people are friends, they hang out, you know, they don't have the, the uh, police uniform on, they don't have the robe on in court, they're not um, in position um, as a lawyer, um, doing their lawyer duty, they're at a restaurant, they're at, a, you know, a family function or get together, and they all know one another. And so if they're family friends, or if they know somebody, or they all help one another, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. And so when an incident like this arises, and they end up having to go to court, they get that same lawyer that they knew from way back or that their uncle is friends with. And they know what the outcome is going to be before it even hits the presses, before it even hits social media. They know they're going to get away with what they done. And so I just want to make that clear that a lot of that is also what I believe is going on. Um along with the racism as well, you know, I believe it's a collusion thing as well, um, that people know one another, and they know who to hire to get them out of these situations so that they don't have to serve any time or be held accountable for shooting black folks. So almost two years after an Illinois police officer fatally shot a black working a black man that was working as a security guard, the state's attorney office announced that no criminal charges will be filed against the officer. So after an extensive and thorough review of the police-involved shooting resulting in the 2018 death of Jamel Roberson, the Cook County State's Attorney um, Office has concluded that the totality of the evidence is insufficient to support criminal charges against the middle Lithian, Lithian police officer, Ian Covey. So the news release from the attorney's office states, so the decision comes after months long protest against police brutality, particularly against black people. And just over a week after none of the three officers involved in Breonna Taylor's shooting, were charged with causing her death. So I am acutely aware in this age of civil unrest that the police involved shootings are viewed under a microscope as they very well should be, Kim Cox Cook County State Attorney said in a statement. So the death of J Jamel Roberson is tragically heartbreaking. And while it might feel to some like justice was not served here, I have both an ethical and legal obligation to make charging decisions based on the law and the evidence. And so the investigation included, now this is basically going over the investigation of this case, and so it included with over a hundred witnesses. So they'll tell you there was all these witnesses and there was an evaluation and they did their investigation of this physical evidence, what they had presented to them, and the information surrounding the evidence are the event that is said. So a secondary review was done, and of their investigation was conducted by the Office of Illinois State Attorney Appellate Prosecutor, who agreed that no charges should be filed against this officer. And so the, the incident occurred, it was November of 2018 with Roberson. He's 26 years old. He's a security guard. He was working as security for a place. It's a bar called Manny's Blue Room. 
in the suburban area of Chicago. And so when an active shooter came in and began firing shots, Roberson pinned the alleged gunman to the ground, a witness stated. And so moments later, Covey, a white Middle-Lithian police officer, arrived and killed the security guard, the police chief said. So the people that were there said, we all yelled, he's a security, he's a security, and without giving any thought to it, the officer shot him anyway. So Adam Harris, a witness who told CNN affiliate WGN, so the vest even said security on it as well, and they shot him in the side. So the shooter was not killed. The active shooter that came in that they that the security guard was trying to apprehend while they wait for law enforcement to take over the scene turns out that the shooter was not killed, just the security guard. And so it's unclear why he was shooting in the first place, this guy that came in or this person that came in shooting. So the Middle Lithian police chief, Daniel Delaney, called the incident tragic at the time. So what we've learned is Jamel Roberson was a brave man who was doing his job, his best, to end the active shooter situation at the Manny's Blue Room in the suburbs of Chicago. So Delaney wrote this on Facebook. So that's pretty much the story. And so here you have a Beatrice Roberson who addresses the news conference on Friday after authorities said the police officer who fatally shot her son, Janelle Roberson, will not be prosecuted. And so... <clears throat> This is just out October the 2nd, 2020. So these are the kind of things, the stories that people have been hearing. And they all point to, hey, this is this is wrong. Something's wrong here. He was a security guard. He was trying to stop a fatal situation from becoming worse. He was trying to save people's lives. Like Breonna Taylor, she was an EMS. She was saving lives and she's in her own apartment and she gets gunned down by bullets of a no-knock warrant. And so all these stories, when you hear these stories, um, and they always end up where the officer, they I, like this one in this case, they say there wasn't enough evidence. They had a hundred witnesses, and the people said he was security. I mean, like, evidence, okay, you already know. In people's mind, they're thinking, wait a minute, okay, he's a security guard working, doing his job, he stops the bad guy or the, the shooters and the police looks at him based on his race. He's working on his back. It says security. They Instead of them shooting the guy that's actually causing the melee and the problems and could potentially kill people, many people, no, they shoot the security guard. And it's because he's black. And that's probably, you know, anybody that lives in Chicago or that lives in, in Illinois, Illinois has also had a history, like any other city, of race, racial issues, you know, social issues that have been racial or a lot of um, unequal um, um, or unjust treatment of black people. And so... <clears throat> Those are the conclusions that people come to when they see that. So when I added in before I started this article, reading it, I felt like there's more to this than just alone the racism. Racism, I believe, does have a, a big part in this because a lot of times they don't view black people as being important or their lives are not mattering. And their lives are not as important. It's it's not really an issue. It's it's just you know without a given notice, you they just shoot black folks because they figure you know they must have did it you know so we're gonna shoot them you know um, and so this is the the feelings that we harbor that we carry and because we constantly see these stories. In the headlines, like every week, you know, um, 
And so I would say to go a step further that there is, I'm sure, and then this is my opinion, so I will express that, that I believe that it's more than just racism alone. I believe that there are people who are in connection with one another. And it's that attitude of, I'll scratch your bag if you scratch my bag. If something goes wrong, if I screw up out there and I kill somebody that I shouldn't be killing, I will you help me in court be able to get away and not have to serve, you know, any time? And so I feel like there may be nepotism and collusion going on uh, along with all of this. And, and basically what that's saying is, is a scenario if, if your dad or your dad's dad were friends, uh, they were playing golf uh, at a club, a golf club, and they were friends with the judge. And you get in trouble, and then all of a sudden, bingo, that judge is the one that's over your high-profile court case and he he or she or whomever helps you be able to not have to serve any time in prison and or somehow that lawyer helps you get off on that case because they somehow come up with not enough or insufficient evidence as they say and so all of it connects and I really am a firm believer that 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 is what is going on in some of these cases that people know one another and you're not going to know about that because they're going to keep that quiet. People are going to be friends. They, you know, judges, lawyers, um, law enforcement, they, they all connect. They all, you know, know one another to some degree. Um, or they know of each other. And so, Two, if you're parts of uh, your belief, if you go to the same um, churches, if you if you have the same uh, sets of biases, if your parents had those biases and that judge, his parents or he himself has those same types of beliefs, you're never going to know about that because they keep that out of the courtroom, they keep it quiet, and they know how to help one another get away with murder, basically. And so sometimes it's about money. Some people know who to pay. You have people that may be related to someone or they're friends with someone who has a lot of money and they're able to pay them before they even start the case. And they say, well, you know, just make it go away. You know, well, how much are we talking, you know, and then pay them that case. All of a sudden, there's not enough evidence that all of a sudden you're not doing any time for killing someone. And yes, it's another black person, but we all are scratching each other's backs. And so I believe some of that is what is going on. It's the reason why these cases wind up being very similar. And then, too, you had not long ago a lot of people um, threatening to end law enforcement or in some uh, cities and, or to change law enforcement or downgrade their pay. Let me tell you, if you start messing with people's money, they automatically have you on a, a hit list. You know, because now you've altered their life because think about it, these people... They have homes, they have vacation homes, they have, you know, when you start making that good money, you're living according to making that good money. And now you have a group of people saying that, no, defund the police, stop making that good money, downgrade it, or, you know, cut, cut that money. Now you're cutting into the lifestyle of these individuals, even though that they're they're, they may deserve this to some degree, but you know there's gonna you're gonna be met with retaliation after you start chanting 
defund the police. And so if you have all of these people who are in the business of law enforcement, they're all going to be forming an alliance against all of these other individuals. And they're going to say, oh, you think so-and-so got away with it. Guess what's going to happen? So you're going to see a lot of shootings of black people. And somehow a lot of these officers are going to walk away and not be held accountable for it. And that is not a surprise at all. And then, too, if you have all these people who are connected with one another, they're friends, they hang out with each other, they go on power lunches, they go on, you know, ski resort um, uh, retreats and all this stuff like that. And maybe they hang out, you know, camp out, they know one another and hobnob. You'll never know this. And that somehow that lawyer, that judge that they were on their camping trip with two weeks ago winds up helping them get away with murder. And so I'm just trying to give you a clue here. So that's, I believe, has a lot to do with what is going on. That's part of it. Um, So... In a nutshell, I'm just going to say like this. I'm not in agreement with any of it. I think it's wrong. And I believe it will come back. I feel like whenever you do something really bad, somehow it, it you have to face it. You have to face the responsibility of what choices you make at some point. And boy, it's going to be bad for these people, you know, because they're making a lot of bad decisions. Um, But anyway, having said that, um, these are coming regularly. Notice that? That's the other thing. You're seeing these shootings of black people coming almost every week. And so it actually seems like it's gotten more progressive and um, more frequent after the George Floyd protests. So... I'm going to let this video go, like, I'm a subscriber, thank you for listening, but you got to be careful out there. You know now that you are in a situation where when this goes on and the climate and the nature of it says that our lives are, are in danger. You don't know if you're going to encounter um, law enforcement that's going to do the right thing or law enforcement that has a vendetta out on you. Because of the fact that this whole atmosphere of defund the police, the whole atmosphere of just the killings, the, the, the killings of black innocent individuals. And now you, you, you have that as more of a threat than even COVID-19. So that should say something. So. Thanks for listening.